Hi, how are you? I'm Michael, it's the Tech for Road channel, and this is the new, oops, Bux 2 SE. SE like a special edition, a second edition, or a silver edition. This drone has a story, initially released as the B2W, an year ago, black plastic, and this thing is quite different. The camera is upgraded. What else? And how does it perform? Let's go and inspect together. Faster, better, harder, stronger. A refrain from a favorite Daft Punk track and also sums up the new MJX Box 2 SE. The previous one was released 18 months ago with the name B2W. This is a wonderful GPS quadcopter which has outstanding performance, is overall very quiet, has a good FPV camera that you can watch via app and Wi-Fi on your phone and is priced just below 200 US dollars at least at the start. If you already know a lot about the B2W model, keep in mind that the SE is not quite a big upgrade, but if you're having a smaller drone or the older Bux 3, then the 2 SE is certainly a serious step up. It arrives well packed, as usual, there's everything necessary included in the box, the drone itself, the transmitter, a battery, the phone holder, the charger, the user manual, some papers and so on. The build quality of this one is superb. The previous generation felt somewhat cheap, it was easy to hear cracking noises from the plastic and the glossy look of the drone was a bit weird. The silver paint here looks nicer and the build quality feels solid. None of these cracking noises are back and it seems to be lighter and I have the feeling that it might be quite well shock resistant. Propellers are self-tightening and the first set have been factory mounted. If you have to replace, make sure that they are well tightened. There are no prop guards included, so be careful where you're flying. Having a battery running at 7.4 volts combined with the powerful 1806 1800 kV motors means that skin wounds are a possibility if you're not careful enough. And please, no matter the drone, make sure to fly responsibly. The Bux 2 SE is ready to fly out of the box. There's no landing gear. You will notice the area below the motors, which is being used instead. It makes the drone look very slim and easy to carry even in a backpack. The hardware is in fact pretty good. We mentioned the powerful brushless motors. You will count on a lot of thrust and fast speeds and it is extremely well responding to the transmitter control. There's also GPS, altitude hold function, 6-axis gyroscope. That all means that equipment is there to support the right level of steadiness and to release the quality of the camera. Indeed, an onboard camera is available, the sensor is 2 megapixels, so the 8 megapixel photos are interpolated. The video is running at 25 frames per second, a rather cinematic frame rate, and of course the lack of electronic or optical image stabilization means that quality won't be superb. Recently there was a discussion around affordable drones, and in one of the comments Andrew suggested doing post-production and software stabilization to improve the footage, so... This is as good as it can get with some color grading and post-processing. Not perfect, but for an untrained eye and coming from a sub-$200 drone, does the job right. We will come back to the camera, let's check now the flight performance. Before being able to take off, you need to calibrate. Always. Annoying, but pays off with excellent balance and no inconsistencies during flight. Before the takeoff, we gotta go through the calibration process. Boring, but a must. Just like every Bucks drone from this year. 
uh, it's very quickly to bind with the transmitter. So literally done. And you can see these LEDs blinking, hopefully it's too sunny. We heard the beeps, meaning uh, it's bound. And now we do, we do the calibration. Clockwise, yup. And now they're green. And after it's green, should I think the nose pointing upwards. Two more. No. Yes, okay. Seems to be ready. Uh, no blinking, red on the front. This seems to be sort of orange. We place it on a flat surface. We wait for GPS signal, which would take probably a minute or two. And as soon as it acquires more than eight GPS satellites, we're gonna be ready for takeoff. The transmitter has very good telemetry and will keep you informed about the GPS transponders the drone is connected to. Should you prefer to fly without GPS and have better manual control, takes just a button slide. The 1800mAh LiPo battery will be good for up to 18 minutes of flight time on theory. And in my testing it was more like 12 to 15 minutes, but that still is a very good achievement. MJX have significantly improved the smartphone app experience. The Bux Go has now integration for all the Bux drones that support camera and telemetry. And there are plenty of cool features, the follow function, limit adjustments, fine tuning for some of the features and even waypoints. Cool thing is that while the drone follows the waypoints, you can still adjust the height and you can recall the operation at any time. And using waypoints, you may plan the flight and not even use the transmitter for as long as the drone follows the path. My personal feeling is that the Bux 2 SE is having the best responsiveness and flight performance among all the models released by MJX this year and I liked it better than both the Bux 3 Pro and the 5W. Control distance is shorter than the predecessor though. I managed to fly 500 meters away from the takeoff point before losing connection. The 5G FPV signal shown on the phone disappeared at around 350 meters and lasted a bit more than what MJX are promising. I think it is good when a device exceeds the initial expectations and should you get confused about controls at some point or you get nervous about the drone getting too far, just initiate the safe return to home and in no time the Bucks 2 SE is going to be back to where you took off. Please note that the function will work best with the GPS feature on, which is anyways the default setting. Now back to the camera and its qualities. 2 megapixels are enough for OK 1080p and the smaller sensor gives you relatively good low light performance. It certainly is not a serious photography device, but does pretty well what it is supposed to. I think simplicity is prioritized to the maximum here. Simple, but yet good looking design. Color choice is interesting and makes it stand out among other drones. Lately there aren't too many devices of this class that can surprise us, but I think this one did. The flight stability is unbelievable and combined with a very quiet operation, I've had a lot of fun. From a video review it is somewhat hard to see and you can get the feeling of an aircraft after you spend some time with it and I can only recommend the Bux 2 SE because of its awesome build quality and easiness of operation. Whatever it does is really excellent. Don't forget that being budget oriented you will lack high-grade drone features, such as gimbal or image stabilization, tiltable camera and some other goodies, but still this is one of the most complete aircrafts I managed to test this year, both aesthetically and technically. Until the end, some more footage and while enjoying these beautiful scenes, you could take time and subscribe, hit the like if the video was enjoyable and use that share button to show your friends how cool the Bugs 2 SE is. 
Enjoy your day, do a lot of good things, and I'll see you soon. Bye.